the Joe Rogan experience. How you doing, man? You're all healed up? The bruising and swelling has gone down, as you can see, but the most serious injury was to the brain. You have a serious injury to your brain? Yeah, brain hemorrhage. What happened? From what? The mob beating. So they were From getting hit in the head, you got a brain hemorrhage? Multiple times. Really? Contusions, yes. They were bashing me on the back of my head and to my eyes. Um, but so how do you know you had brain hemorrhaging and how are you able to just walk around? Well, I was taken to, I started losing my balance after the beating. Mm -hmm. There was no police. I made it uh, to the courthouse, sat down on the ground. Ambulance was called. I had to walk back to the ambulance because the streets were, or walked back to the police precinct in the direction of the mob. The medics that were associated with the Portland police let me know that they, um, that I needed to walk in that direction. It was quite shocking because it was, um, I had just been a victim of this mob beating and then now they're telling me to walk back in the direction of uh, the center precinct where the beating had happened. Did they not know that you had been beaten up? Well, let's, 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 let's set this up for okay. people who are, are new to this and don't understand what happened. Um, I'd been aware of you because of, you had written for Quillette, right? And uh, you had become one of these, for whatever reason, controversial online journalists. And uh, you covered Antifa quite a bit. And you covered a lot of uh, the radical left. You were in Portland. And uh, what was the exact rally that was going on? What was it called? Did, did it have a name? Uh, it was something like Protect Portland. So it was organized by Rose City Antifa and its allies. And by its allies, I re I'm referring to the local chapter of the Democratic Socialist America that came out to support them in numbers. And what are they protecting Portland from? They allege uh, fascists. Fascists, mm -hmm. but just in general? I mean, is there like a particular thing they're worried about? There were two right-wing events happening that day that they were counter-demonstrating against. There was a, on one, so, on part, one part of downtown, the Proud Boys were holding a flag-waving event that was completely uh, peaceful. There was no actually... Flag-waving, American flag-waving? Correct. Okay. Um, and a lot of Portlanders found that provocative and uh, a manifestation of uh, fascistic violence. And in another part of downtown, there was a men's rights activist who was holding um, a rally. Uh, f it was titled for, for Victims of Domestic Terrorism. It was an anti-Antifa event. Hmm. So, uh, A men's rights activist? Yes. That was doing an anti-fascist or anti-Antifa? Correct. Well, what? Boy, it seems like a whole lot of do about nothing. Flag-waving? And anti-Antifa. Okay. Yeah. So, can I set the context for please. for the city of Portland? It's so a mess. You have listeners and viewers all over the world. So Portland, Oregon is a extremely progressive city in the Pacific Northwest of the U.S. And um, I call it a political monoculture because really it's um, uh, not just you're more likely to find socialists, open socialists there than you would find like a regular uh, Republican or conservative. And within this sort of echo chamber of just leftist politics, there's, it's become also a hotbed for far left militancy. So Rose City Antifa is, you could call it like the local chapter movement of Antifa. It's one of the oldest in the country. It's very large in Portland and they hold, um, what you could call protests, but they're, they're, they're protests that always devolve into riots where they essentially take over parts of downtown and attack people, attack their ideological opponents, and do it frequently with impunity. I mean, I wasn't the only one attacked that day. There were two other people who were bashed on the head very and, and had very severe lacerations to the face and head. Um, you may recall the footage uh, from October of last year when there was an elderly driver who was attacked on the streets. Yeah, they were directing traffic, exactly. right? Exactly. And, and somehow or another, the mayor thought it was a good idea to let this take place. Is that the case? And they told the police to stand down. Is that true? So, um, I mean, the next part of this journey for me will be the legal aspect of it. 
and it seems like something stinks in Portland. The issue is really not with the rank and file officers. They're following orders to not intervene. So I, I had been uh, assaulted and criminally harassed early before the mob beating. People were throwing milkshakes at my face and head within eyesight of police who were watching in downtown. And both of these were reported, and the, the answer that I heard that day, as I've heard many times before when I've been assaulted by Antifa, is that we will not question, approach, or detain the suspect because this could incite the crowd. Okay, so this is why this has exacerbated, or this is why this has become such a big deal in Portland, because of this attitude? Because Portland seems to be the hotbed right now for this kind of stuff. Is that, is that fair to say? I think it is. So is this the mayor? I mean, who is, who's the one who's giving the orders to the police to tell them to allow this stuff to take place? Well, um, I'm crowdfunding for the legal fund right now, and we are, willing, we are going to hold accountable whoever is responsible for dereliction of duty, where the evidence leads us. So Portland has an odd governance system in that the mayor, who is up for re-election, by the way, is also the police commissioner. So, oh wow, yeah. How um, the, how does that work? It it was an old system that it inherited, and it just didn't never changed from the Wild West. Like that sounds ridiculous. Yeah, it it is ridiculous. You can see all the political conf the conflicts and in conflicts of interest that that yeah. would arise, right? Yeah, yeah, shitload. Um, how did you get involved in this? Like, what? Why? First of all, why were they angry at you? Uh, I work as a journalist. Uh, I'll name like places that I've been published before. I write and I do video and I do podcasts. So my written work has been published in the Wall Street Journal, the National Review, Spectator, New York Post. I'm also on the editorial team of Quillette Magazine. Um, and one of my beats among several is about far left militancy, particularly in Portland. Um, to me, what I was noticing was that the national and local media coverage had a particular blind spot when it came to their coverage on Antifa. There was all this sensitivity to the quote-unquote far right and uh, white nationalism or uh, white identity extremism, but they could not or would not recognize the militancy that was on the left. And Portland seemed to be one of the places for ground zero, particularly after 2016, we had very violent rioting in downtown that um, a segment of the population could not accept the election results in November. And so uh, they did a million dollars in damage, setting fires and uh, destroying properties and businesses. And at that time, I was a graduate student working at the student paper, and I did a story on that. And I came out to witness, and it, it you know, this was a major American city, but it felt uh, like I was in Afghanistan or Iraq, just with all these fires and explosions and people running around with bats while I'm masked up. And that was the first time I really became familiar with Antifa. And I took an interest in it. And I saw over and over that the media coverage was basically really sort of whitewashing them, kind of like referring to them as anti-fascists, giving them that propaganda victory. And Antifa is a movement there masters of doublespeak and disinformation. So it, it starts with the name Antifa that is short for anti-fascist, but I never refer to them as that because um, that's ceding the ground to, uh, to them. Uh, they, when they say that they are uh, defending a community, self-defense, it actually is referring to me premeditated violence and offensive violence. So I started going to covering this more and more, you know, after I, I left the student paper, I started writing for um, some national and international publications. And there, internationally, there was a, you know, a set of readers who were interested in, in what the hell is going on in Portland? Why are there these continued scenes of street brawls and anarchy over and over? What are the variables that are causing this? And I thought that I could try to shine a light on it. And by doing so, Antifa became enraged with my work. And 
particularly things they've hated me since last year, but they started really escalating um, on on the first of May, May Day. Um, so this year was when I was physically assaulted by them for the first time. They were very upset that I wrote a story for the New York Post where there was a series of, and this is one of the other beats that I work on, is uh, hate crime hoaxes. Um, Portland earlier this year had this huge panic over serious allegations of uh, LGBT people claiming that they were marauding right-wing gangs driving around, trying to kill people with bats, with hammers, trying to uh, kidnap them. And these were all rumors that were reported on social media. It caused a huge frenzy. Even the mayor uh, had to come out and you know, issue a statement about how he was concerned. There was an emergency town hall with the, the local queer center. And um, so I started looking into all these allegations. There were 15 of them. And I found that of the 15, only one was reported to police. And what was reported to police and documented in the report was entirely different from the GoFundMe, where over $10,000 was raised for this trans activist. Um, she had alleged that one night, walking home, transphobic people had beat her with the bat and knocked her unconscious. Police reports said that she was extremely intoxicated and likely fell. And there was no evidence that anybody had assaulted her. So when I, this story came out, because Antifa was really, Antifa and the Democratic Socialist America in Portland were really involved in peddling this hate crime fear in Portland. And I just kind of, you know, threw water on this, this uh, uh, panic that they had been um, flaming. And so on the 1st of May, um, there was a riot that I was covering and one of the masked Antifa people went up and sprayed me with, I think it was bear mace, some type of chemical that blinds you and burns you. Yeah, I saw that video. Yeah. So there was no police that ha that was there. That I mean, that Antifa event was publicly advertised on Facebook and all that. So over and over, like Antifa is very transparent about their calls for people to come to their stuff and to engage in this physical confrontation that they call self-defense. And the police either stay away or on purpose or are told to stay away. So it's very confusing because when you watch the videos, they're, they're just macing people. They're macing people who disagree with them. Like they're yelling at each other and then someone will come along and mace people. And for the police to not step in and do something, it's, I don't, I don't think there's another city in the country that would allow something like that. It just doesn't, it doesn't seem like it makes any sense at all because you're, you're not talking about people that are being physically attacked and that are macing someone to protect themselves or even a threat of being physically attacked. They're just disagreeing with each other and yelling at each other and then someone will come along and start macing people. And I've seen it many times. And I think there's also a real problem with people wearing masks. You know, wh whether their ideology makes sense or not, when you put people in masks and then you have a bunch of people yelling and escalating and then there's teams, there's team Antifa versus team, you know, anybody opposing them, they feel is a white supremacist or a Nazi. And this is just how they've chosen to frame it to dehumanize people. And then you see them attack people. I'm sure you're aware of the girl who got maced in the face because she had a hat on that said make Bitcoin great again, but it was the same color hat as the make America great again hat and she got maced in the face. And she got hit with something too, right? Didn't she get hit in the face with something? Anyway, this kind of shit is really weird. It's really weird and disturbing to see these young people with these ideal, idealistic versions of what they're doing. I think a lot of the people that are involved in that really think they are fighting fascism. They really do. They really think that Donald Trump and the Proud Boys and white supremacists from Charlottesville carrying tiki torches, that these people represent something horrible that's sweeping across the country. And the young people today need to stand up and fight against this. And they're putting on masks and they're carrying backpacks and whacking people in the head with crowbars. It is really fucking weird to see. And it's really weird that the city of Portland, or all cities in fact, haven't made some sort of a, a law where you can't walk around in public with a fucking mask on. Because that is one of the things that helps these people. It's the same thing that you see on social media when people are anonymous and they say the most horrible, hateful shit. They're saying that because they're not in front of you, you can't recognize them, they don't have to take responsibility for what they're saying. 
This is a lot of the, the same characteristics that a person has when they're wearing a costume. You're dressed in all black with gloves on and a face mask, and you're hitting people with a bike lock. Like, what, what is that about? Well, what that's about is you're getting away with being anonymous, and you're getting support from all these other people around you. There's this mob mentality that takes place that's well documented with humans. Where when you get a group of people together and there's another group and it's like it's a tribal warfare type situation. And that's what you're seeing with Antifa. And the fact that the Portland police have, I don't know what's going on with them, whether they've been told to not handle that. But the fact they haven't done anything to mitigate this is fucking, uh, it's, it's embarrassing. It's, it's a shame. It's, it's terrible. It really is. And it's, a tra it's a travesty. You asked about the mayor earlier, um, and if he issued any stand-down orders. There's a statement that was put out after I was attacked by the by Daryl Turner, who's the president of the police union, and he said very clearly he called for the mayor to remove the handcuffs handcuffs of law enforcement so they can enforce the law. And he accused the mayor of politicizing the police department. Is this mayor popular? No, he's not. He's hated well, by moderates because of the things that he allows to happen in the city. But the far left hate him as well. They view him as not radical enough. <laughs>